So we're going to review our, our, uh, our logarithmic properties because they're going to come in handy for um, the calculus. So um, it will make some pretty difficult things. Um, let's just say not easy, let's say much easier. Okay, so some pretty nasty product quotient rules and things like that. So we're going to use the properties of logarithms. So bar, it's been a while since you've had them. And so I'm going to uh, review the properties with you. So um, let's remind, remember what, what logarithm is, okay? So, so from here on out, when I say logarithm, you are going to say exponent. Okay, logarithm, very good. So let's look at this, three squared equals nine. What's the exponent there? Two, all right, you see it? So log base three of nine, and I say logarithm, you say, so what is the answer to logarithm base three of nine? Two, these are equivalent statements. All right, so they, they, they mean exactly the same thing. One is in exponential form, one is in logarithmic form. So <clears throat> no variable, but um, so we are, we're also going to deal with, in calculus, we deal with a lot of uh, the special natural log. And the natural log is Euler's number. His name is Leonard Euler. Looks like Eula, you and I might say it, but he is so smart and has done so much. I'm going to use his name appropriately. So his name is Leonard Euler, but he has his own number, E, which we can get into. There are lots of proofs for the number, but for right now, let's just talk about the number E. Approximately, it's about 2.71828. Okay. Uh, if you, if you can, if you can, it's irrational. It goes on forever, decimal places. If you can get 2.7 for number sense purposes, you're, you'll be absolutely fine. It's definitely higher than two. So that E squared is definitely be closer to nine than it is to four and where, you know, things like that, but just for number sense purposes, but you'll have your calculator, but that's a good number sense purpose. So, so the base E. So if I chose, you know, before we had base three of nine was two. Now I could have, well, let's look at the exponential version here. I could say uh, e to the power of two is 7.389. That's actually true. E squared is 7.389, blah, blah, blah. So this statement would be log the base. I don't know what that was meant to be. The base is E. The result is 7.389. When I say logarithm, what do you say? Exponent. So the exponent, look at this. Logarithm is, that's what Matt, that's what the equal sign says, you know, is um, the exponent. Log. Now that would be a mouthful, and there's and, and we don't write it like that. It's so common, and E shows up so many places that we have a special logarithm for that, and it's the natural log. So the natural log of seven point three eight nine equals two, because E squared is seven point three eight nine. So when you see this statement, this means this, but it's just a nice way to write it. It's the uh, the natural logarithm. All right, so those are some just ways we talk about logarithm. Now, um, let's talk about properties of logarithms. <clears throat> so uh, the natural log of one is going to, um, well, Actually, maybe I'll just write it. I'll just give it to you. Natural log of one. When I say logarithm, what is this right here? Exponent. So what is the base? What is the base that I'm raising uh, to this power? What's well, natural log has what base? E. 
So this says, in other words, this says e to the power of zero is equal to, well, e to the power of zero, any number to the power of zero is equal to what? One. So they get the property. So you won't see that. You'll just see what you'll see is that. You'll see ln one. So then you're like, all right, here, well, what does that mean? Well, e to what power gives me one? Well, e to the power of zero gives me one. So natural log, that's a special log. Another property would be the natural log of a times b. Well, <clears throat> the natural log of a times b is the natural log of a plus the natural log of b. We could do a proof and, and expand. When you multiply like bases, you add exponents, don't you? So logarithms are exponents, but we're not going to get into the proof of it. Um, I want to distract from the issue. But um, properties here, the natural log of A times B is equal to the natural log of A plus the natural log of B. Now, the same is true with um, division. When I have like bases being divided, I subtract exponents. So that would become the natural log of A, the numerator, minus the natural log of B, the denominator. So this would kind of be, we're going to use a lot of this in your expanding and condensing. If I see this, I can write this at any time. If I see this, I can write this at any time. And it's going to be determined, it will determine on the problem we have. You'll have a lot of, you know, you'll have a lot of uh, uh, rational fractions that you are going to require with product rules in them that you're going to be required to integrate and, and take derivatives of. And these properties are going to become very important. Otherwise, they'd be, you'd just be at work for 15 minutes just on a single problem. Um, one more. Uh, we've got power to a power. So <clears throat> good old-fashioned natural log of a to the n. Well, that power, I'm raising a logarithm, which is an exponent to a power. That's power to a power. So that just becomes, you know, um, when I raise a power to a power, I multiply my exponents, natural log of a. All right, so, so let's some just think. If, you know, this is not a direct proof. This is informal. But this would be like doing x squared times x cubed. I add those exponents as 2 plus 3. When I multiply like base, I add the exponents. When this would be like doing x cubed divided by x, that's the same thing as x squared, which we get by x subtracting exponents. So dividing like bases, subtracting exponents. And this one, you could relate it to, um, let's do x squared cubed. That's a power to a power. That's x squared times x squared times x squared. And that, that becomes x to the sixth. So those, were, those properties are going to become super handy. All right, so let's see. That'll be good. You're going to practice all these here in a second. I'll break you free. Um, we're going to do some expanding and condensing. So let's expand. I'll expand one. You're going to need to practice because one is not going to do. Me doing one is not going to help you. But very pretty simple. You'll brush the cobwebs off. Let's say I want you to expand the natural log of x squared y. Well, <clears throat> just do it one step at a time. It, this algebraic stuff, I'm not going to check for steps. This is not calculus-based work. This is just your algebraic steps. But um, uh, when you're getting into the swing of it again, you probably want to be careful. So let's go one step at a time just while we're learning. So we've got a refreshing. We've got x squared to the power of one half. We're OK. So we're doing that in calculus a lot, don't we? So we're used to writing radicals as rational exponents. Now we're in a power to a power situation. So we're going to bring that one half down in front, the natural log of the product x squared y. Now we've got a product situation. So now we've got 
Um, I'm going to be careful to use my parentheses here because when I expand this on the inside, this is going to become the natural log of x squared plus the natural log of y. And we're almost completely done, and you can do this in as many steps as you need. But I expect you, you could almost do it in one step. Um, <clears throat> so now um, it's going to be, I'll just keep the one half factored out. It's going to be one half 2 natural log x plus natural log y. You can distribute or not distribute. It's, it's, it's all going to be for the point of taking the derivative. So... I'm not going to worry too much about it. We could distribute that one half or not. Um, all right, I could do a couple more. I thought about it. There's a couple down here uh, I put, but I think it's it's better for you to practice. Um, let's do a condense. So that was expanding. Now we're going to condense. We're going to go the other way. It's already all expanded out, and I want to put it back together. So let's have a natural log of A plus the natural log of b, minus 2 natural log c, plus 1 third natural log of d. <clears throat> and I tell you what, I get a lot of like, Algebra 2 students come in, in a math lab, and this I always give them this one because make sure they're ready for their test, because this one is a, a, a trick. You've probably, but they probably played this on you to make sure when you took your test, because... Um, the subtraction part only happens. This is the only negative logarithm. So when I expand it, this is what I want to say. Let me cut, just cut to the chase. When you condense, any of the positive terms will go in the numerator, and any of the negative terms will go in the denominator. And they're, you know, they're just, you know, a couple of years younger, just still quite kind of getting used to it. The common thing they do is. They put this in the numerator, that in the numerator, no problem. They put that in the denominator, no problem. But then they see this one come after it, and they put that in the denominator also. So done, right? So let's see what I'm talking about. I just told you the whole problem. I didn't do anything, right? So this is going to be condensed. I have one, two, three, four logarithmic statements, and I'm going to condense it down to one logarithmic statement. So it's going to be natural log of, boom. And then what's it going to become? Well, it's going to become a, b in the numerator. If you're okay, I'm going to bring the power 2 up on the c. So c squared in the denominator. And then cube root of d or d to the one third goes in the numerator. All right? And then if you wanted to expand that, you would do the natural log of parenthesis minus that, and it would be the same thing, Ailey. Mm -hmm. Because, because, right here, properties of exponents. So natural log of A over B is natural log of A minus natural log of B. So, mm -hmm. That probably makes integration a little bit more uh, familiar, right? Because it didn't go anywhere, right? It's just the inverse operation, right? Um, okay, so you, that's well and good. I think I know what I'm doing, so we'll let you practice. One more thing before I let you go. Um, let's have a look at uh, graphing and understanding graphing, okay? So... You know, you've always been asked for domain and range and, and, and whatnot. So realistically, the way I like to think about it is, is we know we need to know all of those things so that we can walk around the math world seeing pictures. Right. So if we can see pictures of functions and how they behave and how they act, we can go in and find their minutiae, the fine details specifically based on a problem, but generally overall, their overall behavior works in a certain way. So let's look at um, the natural log of x's graph. And remember, we're not going to be a whole bunch of graphing, but because of the way it works. So I think what I'd like to show you for this is I would like to show you, well, 
the equivalent statement here, y equals natural log of x, is the same thing as saying e to the y equals x. Right? I say logarithm, you say exponent. Which one's the exponent, the y or the x? Well, it's the y, isn't it? y logarithm is exponent. It says it. So that's the same statement. So let's go and fill out the t table. But instead of filling out x and figuring out what y is, let's go, let's use this statement and fill in y and figure out what x will be. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in. It's only three types of numbers I know. Negatives, zeros, and positives for terms of plugging in, right? Irrationals and rationals and all well, that's not going to make any difference. So in the real number system, we've got negative numbers. Let's try negative one. That's a nice, easy one. So I'm going to plug in a negative. So e to the negative one. Well, all of us remember negative exponents just it's reciprocal. So that becomes e to the power of one in the denominator. So, you know, in e to the power of negative two, let's do a negative two and a negative one. So there's negative two, there's negative one to build a pattern. So e to negative two is one over e squared. So when I plug in negative two, I get one over e squared. So one over 7.3. And when I get e to the negative one, I get one over e, one over 2.71828. Then, okay, so let's see. I, I've tried some negatives. So every negative number I get is always going to be a reciprocal that is positive. That's going to be key. Now let's try the number zero. So let's see, e to the zero. Oh, that's a property. e to the zero is one. So if my y value is zero, my x value is one. All right, now let's just try some positive numbers and see if we can establish a pattern. Let's try one to the 1 is e, and let's try 2. e to the 2 is e squared. So when I plug in for y, 1 and 2, my x value are e and e squared respectively. So when I plugged in 1 and 2, I got e and e squared. So I just built some good points on the table. Now let's see what that does. So, so general behavior means that... Let me see if I can get this eraser to work right here. Let's do a small one, right? So that means key concept, right? So wake up for me a little bit. So Len, just key concept. Didn't matter what Y value I chose, negative, zero, or positive. It did not ever give me any negative X values, right? So that means that your Y axis of the parent function. It never will go that way, right? Obviously you can transform it. That's not what we're talking about right now. Then the other key point is gonna be this one. This is the one I like, one zero, right? Because I can see that one easily. So one zero, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. <clears throat> and then E one, is a nice labeling point. I have trouble seeing it, like, right? So it's out at almost three and it has a height of one. All right, so let's go ahead and draw the picture and then let's talk about it more than anything. So really our general understanding of this is gonna happen right now. So this is the graphing, but why are we doing it? So we understand how the function behaves. So what we know is, is asymptotic at, the, the y-axis is a vertical asymptote, x equals zero. Doesn't go beyond that. It is monotonistic, meaning it always increases, right? It has an x-intercept at time one, and it has the point E1. Now, let's go back. Monotonistic. So this is beyond a bit of your algebra two, but let's remember what we know in calculus. Monotonistic means it always does one thing. It's always increasing that function is always increasing so that means f prime is always greater than zero it's also concave down so for all of time f double prime is always going to be less than zero so those are going to be key factors later on 
So, um, yeah, so then really, okay, let's just pretend, let's just have fun and I'll let you go, right? So let's do natural log of um, x minus 2, simple one. So that means algebra says, oh, I'm going to shift my parent function, and it happens to be the natural log, I'm going to shift it right to, right? So I know my stuff. So that means my vertical asymptote is no longer at x equals 0. It's now at x equals 2. The point that was 1 to the right of the intercept, well, it was at 1, 0. Now it's been moved over, so it's now going to be at 3, 0, because it's going to be 1 unit to the right. The e1, so it'd be, it would be 2 plus e, right? So whatever that would be. Uh, 4.71828. But then over here, so basically, I'm not even going to worry about that point. But I do know it's going to be a little bit. And at this point, uh, at, at 2 plus e, it's going to be at a height of 1. All right, but generally, still monotonistic, still always increasing, shifted to the right, still concave down for all the time. Right, and those points are there. Okay, so that is, and this is a big Friday because normally um, we don't lecture on Fridays, but uh, we normally quiz, but since we just had a test. So we're going to call that a day. Um, we're going to practice, and then um, and now we'll just call it an easy day for Friday. Okay, so I will get you, let's see, what did I put down? I put page 329, 7, 11, and 17. Okay. Definitely um, easily digestible. Okay. Try that. Monday we'll be doing a, 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 a graded practice for credit. And then we'll just do a couple more days, and then we'll get into the calc again. Okay.